Hi guys, I'm Timmy from Mondacon and here's next to me Tin Yasio. Tin Yasio is our cosplay judge at this competition or this convention and I will speak with him for now and stay tuned. <laughs> so Tin Yasio, thanks for coming to Mondacon. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> this is your first time at Mondacon, am I right? Yes, it's, it's correct. And how did you like it so far? Um, we were in sightseeing on the first day and uh, so many beautiful buildings. Uh, I really like architecture of uh, and like to tell the differences between architecture in different countries. So it was a very good start before the convention. Um, mm -hmm. And just go around, see some pretty buildings and in enjoy some good weather. So that was very nice. <laughs> and then of course the convention. Um, mostly so far I've been in the judging room uh, at the booth, but the people who stopped by the booth yesterday were really nice as well. So. And how was the judging? Uh, what was the hardest part for you? What details did you pay most attention and so on? Um, yesterday uh, the hardest part was that there were so many. So to remember everything at the end of the day about the judging was actually really difficult because there was so many different ones uh, and today I think it was a little easier because there were few peop uh, less people um, so to kind of compare them to each other were easier because the amount of things we needed to compare were less. And what kind of details uh, took your took your most of your attention? What, what um things that cosplayers showed you, you valued the most, for example, what details they made, what materials they are worked with, what kind of techniques, what's the most important thing? From I think to me it's actually the overall, um, because I believe that if you, uh, it's, it's to me personally it's better to be around the same level in all of the different skills you can use for costume than to have very big differences, uh, simply because it will make it easier to both to judge, if because you can judge the cosplayer's overall level, but it's also makes the cosplay more harmonic to look at, because if something is, uh, for instance, if we say the armor is really, really good, but the sewing is less good, then you can really see a big contrast and it can be uh, kind of conflicting to look at also for yourself because you you have so different skill levels. So, mm -hmm. And I saw like, and most of the people, they had kind of the same level for all the skills, but there were a few people where I really noticed uh, a difference. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I, th I think it <laughs> <laughs> answers your question. <laughs> yeah, it's t you totally answered it. And uh, what kind of cosplays do you like to do the best by yourself? Um, I think I prefer sewn costumes, um, mainly because it's um, there are more differences between the, the things. Because if I make uh, armor, I haven't made a lot of them, but I've made a little bit of armor but it's a lot of the same kind of things even if it's different details it's the same techniques in the way that I work with heat I burn my fingers I put them under the cold water I go back I burn my fingers and back and <laughs> forth <laughs> um, but where it's uh, sewing there's a lot of different things there is um, well of course there's pattern for armor things as well there are pattern construction but you have many different uh, other different parts of it because you can do hand embroidery or gold work embroidery beading whatever it is that you really feel fits or you can do uh, painting on it of course that's also included in armor but it's just like a lot of different things you can choose to do and there are different uh, stages where when it's armor I feel like I just start and then I just work on the same thing for a long long time until I'm done. And Dudush mentioned that you attended many conventions inter international and you also participated at contests. Yes. What kind of advice could you share with our cosplayers who also want to go international cosplay contests? I think the most important uh, thing when you go to international contests and when you want to go to international contests is to have actually the right attitude because um, when I started doing uh, competitions uh, back when I was... I was 16 I think 17 around that wow, so young yes <laughs> and, and back then um, I did not it was my first convention when I went entered a contest and I had a, a partner who was very much um, she was like very focused on winning mm -hmm. and I kind of just went with the flow so because she was like oh I hope we win we have a good chance and I was like okay I hope we win we have a good chance like just blank you know mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, teenager blank but the older I got and when I started going to international contests um, the more I really valued like my own personal core of this because I do it for fun and it has always been because of that and to really get that approved that it is for fun and when you go to the contests you're not going there to win you're going there to meet the other contestants to have a great time and experience whatever the contest can give you 
Um, and depending on which, which contest you go for, uh, they will give you a different experience. Um, mm -hmm. For instance, if you take uh, WCS uh, in Japan, it's not just a contest. It's 10 days of a lot of other things, promotional events and courtesy visits. And when you, on the other hand, take, um, uh, for instance, EC, which you have here. I didn't go to EC myself, but I was there as a helper one of the years. And that is um, not with a lot of other things. It's just a contest. But even so, if you go there thinking, I'm going to win this, I'm going to go here to win this, you will not have the same kind of experience because the socialization is way more than yeah. going and having five seconds of glory of winning something. It's really a nice message because I think when actually we, we, when you go with this I want to win attitude, then you, if you don't win in the end, you have the bad feeling after the convention, yes. which shouldn't happen. Yes. And, and if you go with the, feel, with the goal to socialize, to meet people and to experience it, you mm -hmm. will not fail. Yeah. <laughs> so no matter what, you will have a success feeling because you, you manage to meet people and you manage to maybe make new friends. Who knows, maybe it will someone that will last for a lifetime, you never know. Mm -hmm. And uh, you are really famous about your crossplays. Uh, what made you into doing crossplay? The fun thing is actually that a lot of people mistake this topic because I actually rarely do crossplay. I just mm -hmm. choose characters who tend to be very feminine, but most really? of them are actually guys. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I think in the past five years, I've only done one crossplay, mm -hmm. um, which was my Alice costume from Alice Madness Returns. Uh, and that one I chose uh, not because I was at all into the whole crossplay thing, but because I was originally supposed to make another costume for the NCC finals. Uh, the NCC is the Nordic I Cosplay see. Championship. Mm -hmm. But it was fully embroidered from here to here. And because of uh, personal uh, health reasons and uh, family health reasons and a lot of other things, I felt that I will not be able to make this in time. I will mm -hmm. not be able to live up to my personal standards for what I know I can do. So I didn't want to do it because I loved this character a lot and I wanted to do it justice for myself. I see. So I had, uh, I really loved the game Alice Madness Returns and I, w I had an idea for a performance but I was actually very insecure about if I should do it or not because she was a female. Because mm -hmm. I've done a lot of other characters who look female but aren't. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. always the thing that I come back to, but they aren't. Mm -hmm. I don't have to wear like a bra with fake breasts or anything yeah, like that. Yeah. So it's still like, it's my own body. While for a, like a crossplay, suddenly with corsets and, and everything, it, it's like this is sudden a very drastic change, and also corsets kind of hurts. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's it's more like by now after this, I'm kind of okay with it. I could probably make a crossplay again, but it's it's more just like I choose characters who are just feminine looking because mm -hmm. of uh, design wise, often uh, because very generic male looking characters their designs are kind of boring um, in the sense of details uh, if I wanted to hand embroidery or beading or just put sparkles all over if I'm not making like skating outfits <laughs> uh, it's not very common and I like sparkly things I see and uh, how do you choose your next course place uh, um, usually mostly it's based on what I feel like in the moment mm -hmm. uh, I am one of the people who have not a very long want to do cosplay list because mm -hmm. when I want to do them I just start on them and then I make them but it also depends on uh, what the purpose of the costume is because if it's for a contest um, usually if it's for like the Danish cosplay championship where we have qualifi qualifications for other countries uh, I go with the um, I, with the mindset that I want to challenge myself and I want to make something detailed uh, because I believe that the Danish standards are quite high uh, mm -hmm. like craft wise and I want to feel like that I'm it sounds maybe a little weird but I want to feel like I'm worthy of <laughs> of going on stage and really just give my best because I know all the other people work their hardest and they do everything they can to make it as good as possible so I feel like I really want to do this as well because it it's just I guess it's kind of a community thing in Denmark I'm not really sure I see and what kind of animes uh, do you like the most? Because it's, it's an anime convention, many people here love anime. And yes. I'm just really interested in what kind of shows are you looking at? Um, I don't watch all that much anime, but when I finally find something, I fall mm -hmm. completely in love with it. Um, <laughs> I, in general, like this genre of uh, sci-fi. Um, so, mm -hmm. like, uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion is one of my all-time favorites. Um, though I read the manga based on the anime and I'm still not done with the anime because uh, I'm better at reading things than watching it. Mm -hmm. um, so that one is like an all-time favorite but 
otherwise I like things I think with action in and mm -hmm. with humor also so it's like either a lot of action or a lot of humor and then rarely I have uh, a few sports animes um, but I think in the end it comes down to personal character development mm -hmm. if that's not there I won't like it because that's a, that's, that's a nice trait that you follow. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for this interview. Yes. And uh, good luck for your next Ghost Fairy Yes, Gospel. thank you. Hope you will see you again here at Wonder. I hope so too. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye, guys.